Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show with your host, Phil Tarrant. Okay, everyone. Welcome to the show today. Uh, often, it's interesting how things align and uh, I get to tell good stories around segues of stuff happening. And uh, today, uh, we're recording just the day after the potential leadership spill down in Canberra where... Uh, uh, our Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull was uh, his leadership was threatened, uh, and uh, he managed to stay the course after the party room agreed that he was still the right guy for the job. But there was plenty of stuff happening in Canberra yesterday, and no doubt there will be plenty of stuff happening into the future as we near the federal election. And we touch on this stuff every now and then, and as it gets closer, we'll chat and delve a little bit deeper into how a potential changing government might affect property investors. But I'm not going to talk about that today, but today I'm going to talk about Canberra and Canberra property. And uh, for a lot of people who have invested in Canberra over the years, uh, they have done quite well. Canberra, and I'm going to rattle off some stats which are buried deep in my brain, which I'm sure is not correct, but the average or the the median or average um, salary in Canberra is higher than uh, the rest of Australia. It's a um, an industry and economy driven, obviously, by the mechanisms of government. Uh, lots of white collar professionals, and uh, typically um, there is a, a general pressure on price growth. There's a lot of development going on down there, and the nation's capital should continue to grow. But Someone in the studio today who's uh, been pretty active in the Canberra market for a little while, and he's going to come in. He's came in, and he's going to share his story and hopefully give his uh, his insights on what's going on in Canberra. He's a Canberra boy, born and bred. Uh, Nathan John Ramano. how That's are you going? Uh, very well, thank you. Thanks uh, for having how's, me. How's my pronunciation? Was all right? Or yeah, is spot it, on. Uh, yeah, spot on. What, what's, where, where's the name from? Ita- it's Italian. Italian. Yeah, it's Italian. Yeah. yeah. Is there a big Italian community in Canberra? Nah, it's no. more Croatian. It's, it's more Croatian. More Croatian. Yeah. Croatian, okay. Greeks, things like that. Yeah, so okay. Mm. They took over in the early stages and produced what we have today, I believe. That's yeah, good. So is your family first generation Australian or you are? or uh, uh, Yes, yeah. yeah. So okay. my, my family originally came over in 1951 okay. on a boat. Okay. Uh, resided in Maxwell, mm. uh, grew banana farms, things like that. And That's dis- it? Dispersed from there, yeah. Okay. So. That's cool. So you were born and bred, Canberra? Oh, I'm originally from the coast. Oh, okay. So Maria Bateman's Bay Area. That's a nice so part of the world. Grew up there, yeah. yeah. But I, I don't get back there much. So yeah. Not, not fast enough. So how'd you end up in Canberra then? Uh, just my brother and sister moved up there yeah. a lot of years ago. I travelled a bit of the world and when I got home, I pulled up shop there, thought I'd go revisit when I got home and just never left. Okay. And there was enough work to support what I wanted to do and away we went. There you go. What's the work do you do? I'm yeah. actually a tradesman. Okay. So I run a carpentry business. And construction company mm. in Canberra. So you guys are killing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, 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 def- it's definitely being a tradesman in the ACT at the moment. It's definitely, I, I, I believe one of one of the things to be doing. I was reading a thing in the paper, uh, I don't know, a week or so ago, and it had the uh, the top paid tradies. Yeah, because tradies, yeah. tradies make good money, right? Yeah. You know, and I always say, if I had my time again, it would have been a trade. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, now we're a suit and talk all day, but uh, <laughs> removalists get paid the most. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know. Well, see, the funny the funny thing with Canberra is there's a, there's a lot of um, Democrats coming in and out. Mm, yeah. So the, the removalists are all paid by the government in, in that scenario. So I believe they they'd, get, well. they'd be getting paid three times the amount than what they're probably worth. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. They've carpenters always, you know, as a trade. And, yep. and you mentioned you've done some travelling and stuff. Yeah. It's a great thing to travel with, right? Yeah. You well, rock up I, anyway and get a job. Yeah. Well, that was the thing. I'd never went longer than two days in my since doing my trade than actively having to look for a job. So that's pretty good. Yeah, it is pretty good. Do you like being a, a carpenter? Uh, sort of, are you a joiner or are you a carpenter? Like carpet, how, carpenter, yeah, yeah. houses. So we, we do a lot of townhouse sites. So we build frames, fit them out, yeah. houses, all that sort of stuff. So mm. I, I enjoy my trade from time to time. Um, now that I'm sort of getting into my mid 30s, it's. Are, no, you, uh, are you sort of the guy banging in nails and putting up sheeting or are you sort of telling other blokes to do that? A bit of both? A bit of both now. Yeah. yeah less, less, less time wearing the nail bag, more time directing. That's all right. It's it's good, but it's a new part a new part of business that you got to learn. Yeah, and you subcontract into other builders. Yeah, to, 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 so with, with all the townhouse sites, mm. um, I subcontract other builders. You know, all the big developers in town. You know, and then with the houses I do on the side, they're you know contracted myself through through my company and okay. things like that. That's so, cool. so yeah, so and, and I guess that's how. It all started for me yeah. as a property investor, yeah. So you had the property bug by building properties and then you went, oh, hang on a second, let's try uh, and make a few bucks doing this myself? No, not at no. all, not no. at all. Um, how it all started was um, I just needed to buy a property to move into. Okay. Me and my partner at the time, mm. who you now we're married with children. Okay. This And this was, I'll oh, be six years ago now. Mm. So, and then we brought we brought a two-bedroom apartment on Flemington Road in the ACT and yeah, the rest has sort of grown from there. 
That's cool. Yeah. So. All right. So so let's let's go forward and we'll come backwards from yeah. there. So, so how, how big is your portfolio now? Uh, uh, in, in value? In, in no, in number of properties. So nine properties. Nine properties. Yeah. And and they're all within the ACT. Yes, correct. Have you crossed the board like in the Queen or anything? It's no, all ACT. It's all ACT. Okay. Cool. And sort of value of that portfolio thereabouts? Four point six. Okay. And what sort of debt you're holding on it? Three point two ish. Okay. All right. So you got some equity in there. Yeah. There's and, a bit. Yeah. There's a bit. But there, there's a bigger picture to the whole equity thing. It's not. You know, the equity is not there to drive more property investment. Mm. It's there to potentially drive business in the future. Okay. Let's have a chat about that then. So yeah. a lot of people will say, I'm building a property portfolio so I can retire with a uh, an income, guaranteed income every single year. Yep. Um, and you're saying that your objectives is different to that. Or, orig- originally, that was my direction yep. and objective. Mm. Um, but now it's, as you get a bit older and you, you learn business, you know, you learn other ways to grow business and things like that. And mm. that's sort of the decision I've made for the next five-year path. Okay. So what are you doing? So you're generating equity and you're going to draw down on that to help for, to finance business to, growth? To, to develop, yes, correct. To, to develop your own? My own projects and things like that. Okay, yeah. cool. So it's going to give you – so you'll draw down on that equity so you can finance the build of new yep. property assets yep, correct. that you can use to either sell yep. or Move keep. on. Yeah. That's right. Okay, you're going to move them. Yeah, move okay. them on. In that sense, so the plan is let's say I do six units, mm. I'll potentially try and keep one out of that whole project. Yeah. And if, look, if I can't afford it, I'll sell them all and just keep a bit of cash and move on to the next one. Okay. So because the homeowner's warranty insurance is one of the biggest struggles of becoming a builder slash developer yeah. in, in any state. So you're potentially just becoming a developer. Yeah. That's that's the plan. That's the, and and have, when do you think you'll hit that point where 100 percent of your efforts of your business is going to be on developing your own stuff versus doing it for other people? Hard to say, yeah. but, but that's the goal. Isn't that's it? the goal. Two to three years. I'm hoping I can literally have my hands off the tools. Okay. So and then you just project manage your own development. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'll okay. build my own developments, things yeah. like that. So so you're well positioned in that. A lot of people like the idea of being a property developer, but they. You know, well, it's, it's one of them. They're things. not carpenters. No, no, that's <laughs> right, that's right. And there's a lot of things that I've learned over the years, mistakes I've made, sort of in the trade trade industry, that I, I believe I won't make the same mistake again. Yeah. In that scenario, where it'll cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars, mm. where you see it happen to a lot of people at the moment that think it's you can just walk in and. It's a great apprenticeship for you, though, as in doing it for other people mm. and watching all mm. the mistakes that they've made that's so right. you can mitigate those risks doing it yourself. Yeah, that's right. Perfect apprenticeship. Yeah, so I've spent, I've spent six years, the last six years just going for it and watching watching these guys and, you know, I, I don't really, I let them make their own mistakes. I don't step in. Do you, sort of, you don't try and go, oh, I don't know, I've been here before, maybe don't, don't do that? Try not to step on toes. Yeah. Ego, egos are pretty big in the ACT. Yeah. And, so, in, and, in, and in building as well. Yeah, right? yeah of so course. A, yeah, of it's course. It's an interesting culture. It, yeah, yeah, it is. And when, when people when people are fronting a lot of money, let's say they're fronting four or five million dollars for a yeah. project, they don't really like being told what to do. Yeah. Think, or they're being an idiot. Yeah, that's yeah. What, yeah, that's what I think that's what it more is. Yeah. They don't okay. like being called the idiot. So what would be the two or three biggest mistakes you've seen other people make when they're developing property? Oh, just unforeseen expenses mm. is probably the biggest one. Poor management. Yeah. Poor management of the project or yeah, the trades? Yeah, poor, mani- poor or management. Oh, probably, it, will, it, it all flows into both. Yeah. Um, poor management of the, tr- the trades is big, but any good tradesman wants to get the job done and get the hell out of there as fast as they can. Mm. So they should be putting pressure on the builder, developer themselves to, to succeed and get out of there quicker and be better <clears> cash flow. You know? So let's break this down a little bit for, yep. for, for, for everyone tuning in. Yep. The hierarchy of, of how a building site works. Mm-hmm. So there's a green green patch of grass, right? Yep. And you want to put 10 townhouses on it, right? Yep. How, how does it all work? The architect creates the plan mm-hmm. and then the architect gives that to who? To ACPLA, which okay. is ACT's planning agency yep. where they look after and give it the BA, the building application approval or the development application approval. Okay. Which that process in itself can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars before the project starts. Mm. And that, that, that's another mistake a lot of people make. They don't see, because you've got to obviously buy the land, then you've got to sit on the value of the land, and you're potentially paying a lot of interest on this from time to time mm. through the months as, as it gets ready for construction. You know, and, and, and a lot of people, it takes more than 12 months 
to get these things out of the ground and yeah. you're looking at a million dollars, you know, you're paying six grand a month or something like that. So just month. just on money to hold the property. Yeah, that's right. And if it takes two years, mm. you know, you, you're losing 40, 80 grand, you know what I mean? So so someone owns the project, so someone would be the owner of the land mm-hmm. and the owner of the, the, the project to build this stuff. Mm-hmm. They work with an architect to say, Correct. what can we do on this site? Yep. That's right. everything from above ground and underground with yep. like what, so what all, all your need. services, everything like that. Yep. They under, So the architects understand all the legislation and all the rules they need to, to dot the I's across the T's yep. as they move along. They'll potentially submit the plans through through the certifier. On behalf of the owner. Yeah, on behalf of the owner. Through a certified. Okay, so who is a certified? What's a certified So do? the certifier, he's the one that literally ticks off the building at the end of the day and okay. says your fire hydrants are in the right spot, you've got enough parking spaces, your ceiling heights are right. And, and, and the certifier works on behalf of the builder. legislative government to say that that is correct. So the government can say, that's all cool, but they work on behalf of the builder. That's right. Okay. That's right. So you're so the builder's paying them a big, large, hefty fee yep. for them to say, yes, that's fine. That's okay. And then the yep. government goes, okay, that's right for yep. us because he's a certif- certified. Yep. Yeah, okay. that's right. All right. That's right. So it goes, goes to the, the planning committee. They tick it and they yep. go, all right, you guys are good to go. Yep. So we'll put the money aside for the moment. Yep. Um, so, all right, day one on site. Who's in control of everything? So the, so the construction manager or the site foreman literally okay. takes over from there. Okay, and and the the owner typically is that person, or they appoint someone to do that work. Look, ninety percent of the time they appoint someone to do it. Okay, and that's a professional project manager, pretty yep. much. Okay, yep. and we're talking ten townhouses, so it's not a, a huge development, but it's not a small. Yeah, that's right. right. That's right. Okay, so that person's job is to get the thing built. Yep. That's okay, right. and in, they they in, coordinate everything in record time. Yeah, in record time. Yep. Okay, so who who would you see on site? You know, who, who's this guy coordinating? Well, everyone. He, he, everyone, absolutely yeah. everyone. So his job literally is to keep all the tradesmen supplied with material, give them construction programs, ensure they're hitting their deadlines and moving forward from there. Okay. And and you as a carpenter would mm-hmm. be one component of that. So yep. so some blokes would come in and prepare the site, then that's you right. get, so you got co- your, concrete is in, would lay a slab if it's a slab. That's right. So you get, you get your earth movers in, yep. they strip the dirt, yep. do your site cut, you get your drainers, your electricians, then concrete, then your carpenters, bricklayers. You so, so you normally come in after all the services are there and a yep. slab's been laid and they yep. just go, here's a flat bit of concrete, yep. you've yep. got to build everything around Spot it. Spot on. Okay. Build, and then, build what we want. And then you take that all the way through to a finished product. Mm-hmm. There. Yeah, so you do all the in, in, in internal, external finishing. Yeah, 100% from okay. start. Literally from that point, I'll be there till the very end of the project. Okay. And- so you, you guys don't do the landscape or anything. You have sparkies and plumbers come and do all the bits yep. and bobs. In so, so in terms of the most important people on site, yep. uh, you know, there, there is a pecking order on site, yeah, right? Yeah, you could course. say that. Yeah, it's fair. Yep. Um, where do carpenters sit in that? Um, I'd, I, I generally make a fair huff and puff. So yep. I believe carpenters are where we're the most important. Yeah. Um, we may not get paid generated off what I think, yeah. off, off the value, but... So everyone sort of works around you guys once yeah. the slab's laid, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it can become quite frustrating and annoying because mm. things get in your way. You can't finish certain things or certain people are in your way and things like that. But if you've got a good... Well, once again, if you've got a good construction manager or project manager, they, they'll they have it set up so you don't have any problems and you're in and out yeah. as quick as possible. Okay. And, and typically it's the other trades that make all the mess and stuff, right? Yep. And you yeah, guys yeah, always got to, you've got to clean yeah, it up, right? Yeah, 100%. Okay. All right. But what, what, what I'm getting at here for people thinking about developing yeah. and, and I think they can learn a lot from your experience is yeah. that... Your carpenter and your construction manager or, or the project manager are pretty much the linchpins of a successful project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I believe so. I yeah. believe so. So the communication between myself and any form of project manager or foreman, it's three, four, five, six times a day. Yeah. You know, it, working out programs together where we, we need to be for other tradesmen to come through and ensure they're hitting their, their, their scheduled targets as well. So so you guys need to have stuff ready for other people to come in and do what they yeah. do, but then you move in after it. So yeah. it's just a, a slow... When you see a building site that works well, it's a, mm. it's a beautiful thing. Oh, it's like, great to it's, watch. It's, it's great to watch. And yeah. and the camaraderie of people on site, you know, yeah. often there's a lot of friction between yeah, yeah, trades. It's yeah, quite funny. It's, it's, it's a really weird... Yeah. For someone who's not in the game but has some experience of dealing with people, yeah, it's yeah. a funny... Yeah, well, ecosystem, it's ecosystem, right? Yeah, you well, know? it's it's um, I've, the years I've spent in the ACT working now mm. is all the, all of us tradesmen. We're literally all flowing together on the same sites. Yeah, from one site, let's say I might go work for another builder or something like that. Mm. Then I'll ensure these tradesmen come across with me on, on my behalf. Yeah. For, for you know, for, so for, you want to work with particular people because you yeah, know they yeah. make your job easier. Yeah, and we we all know what we need to achieve. Yeah, and sometimes when you walk onto a new site, the whole pecking order's got to try and start again. You yeah, know, a bit of push and shove's got to happen. It's probably one of the only industries where P 
people still communicate in the old-fashioned way. Mm. Like people tell people as it is, yeah, yeah, scroll straight up, swearing, yeah, straight, straight up. Straight Whereas in, in the corporate world where, where, where I work with, it's very, yeah. very sort of yeah, like even, of softer. Even, even for me, like it's, um, you know, I, I, they, they want us to communicate a lot via email and things mm. like that. You know, it's near, it's near impossible for me to sit down and type an email yeah. to, to, to let them know how I feel, yeah. you know, or what I need to achieve <laughs> next month, you know. It's, just tell them. Tell yeah, them over the just, toolbox. Yeah, just yeah. go and tell them. Just say this is how it is. We mm. either achieve it or we don't. So so to be a good developer, uh, to actually deliver a good project, mm-hmm. having worked with a number of construction managers mm-hmm. and and, uh, and project managers, if you're that person, mm-hmm. uh, whether you're doing it yourself or you're, you've employed someone to do it on your behalf, yeah. but how can you be good at doing that, not the piss off tradies? Because the last thing you want is pissed off tradies, right? Yeah. So... Just be some empathy. To have some empathy, don't be. I, th- I think just be clear with your communication. Yeah, clear with what you want to achieve and realistic. That's mm. all it is. Being realistic and clear with your direction, and that comes with experience. Then a lot of experience. Yeah, yeah. A, lo- a lot of people don't give the whole foreman or construction manager role enough credit. I believe mm. it's. Um, I've been offered a lot of a lot of jobs as a construction manager, and even I say no. Okay, you know, because it's just too much stress. Yeah, you know, so it's well, a stressful job, right? Everything's yeah, on, on the construction. Yeah, well, manager. it's your, you know, it's literally your job. Yeah, it's just not your money, but they, you know, you've got to treat it like it is. Mm. And I guess that's hard to get into the mental space when it's not your money, but you've got to treat it like, like it is. it's your money. Yeah, that's right. So for a lot of people who want to do a development, they might say, mm. oh, I'm going to build three townhouses on yep. a block right now. I can do it myself. Yep. I work as an accountant during the day, so yep. therefore I'll be really good at this. Yeah, yeah. They're the type of people who typically have the biggest issues with mm-hmm. tradies because the two things you said, good communication, being realistic at yep. time frames, often they don't get right because they just think that doesn't take Yeah, long. well, that's right. And, and, and another issue is we, we build relationships with these foremen mm. and construction managers and project managers as years go by. Yeah. So it's the same deal. We know how to communicate with each other. Literally, they just need to send me a text message or a phone call. Yeah. You know, if it's someone new, you've still got to learn their ins and outs and how they like to communicate and, yeah. you know, and if they are coming from a corporate world as such, you know, it's um, it's a little bit hard to communicate with us. Well, you've got your own language as well, right? Yeah, yeah that's you right. Know. You know, that's blue collars, you know. We're, yeah. not, <laughs> we're, 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 not, we're not, like I said, we're not tech savvy. Mm. So we're all about the new Makita drills and things like that. Yeah. Well, the thing mm. is that, you know, if you if you can crack the code of working with traders yeah. as, yeah. as someone, and I'll talk about my experience from a, yeah. um, I guess, corporate background. If you can crack, if you can crack it, yeah. you can do really well. Yeah, yeah, you, And most people don't, aren't, don't crack it. No. You know, I always speak to people, all they do is complain about tradies. Yeah. They're idiots. They don't know what they're doing, blah, 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 blah. And I just yeah. sit there going... You obviously don't understand. You probably never picked up a hammer in your life, yeah, right? Exactly so go right. and do it. Go and go and spend a day on site. Yeah. You know, if any property investor called you up and said, "Can I just spend a day on site sweeping the floors and working what's going on?" I'm sure. You go, yeah, sure. And you probably okay. go, "Oh God." I'd, I'd take them, yeah, I'd take them all on if they put their hands up. That's yeah, for sure. <laughs> teach them, teach them a real good lesson. And and I reckon it's not a bad. T- I've I spent time on building sites. Yeah. You know, um, before I started doing what I was doing, I was, you know, like. You know, labour and, yeah, and, yeah. and doing sort of not highly technical stuff, but stuff which is like digging trenches for pipes and, yep. you know, all that sort of stuff. And um, I, I recommend to anyone who wants to actually, if they're not in the game of construction and they're thinking about as a property investor to go and actually start doing their, their, their own developments, yeah. go and spend a couple of days, go and, go and give a couple of days to your local builder on site and actually see what's going on and yeah. it will change your... Yeah, it'll, it'll, cha- change, it'll change, change, change your perspective. It yeah. really will, you know, and it's... You get a lot of people coming through university degrees mm. and things like that. Um, their knowledge is second to none, but their people skills are just no good, no good, no good. And that's the key. And that's what, yeah, yeah. That, that is the key. Yeah, I was um the different different things I do, but I was chatting with someone who um essentially they head up uh, all of the recruitment for all the Australian Defence Force yep. in, in Australia, right? Yep. Um, and I was chatting with her and, you know, talking about skill sets, right, you know, and, and talking about the next generation of, like, fighter pilots yeah. or or captains of warships or people flying drones to, to what or, or soldiers. And they said the three most important skills in the new economy is communication skills, empathy, and the ability to negotiate. And they're the sort of stuff that you don't learn from a yeah. textbook, right? Yeah, that's right. You, you learn from real life experience. Yeah, hundred so, percent. And that, that is exactly a, a work site is, is a microcosm of that. Yeah, that's, you know, ex- that's exactly the what the people it is, that do well, the builders that do well, and the builders that become very wealthy mm. through development have those three skills. So imagine that's that's where you're going with well, your, we, with yeah, your, your, your story. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Because the builders, the builders that I've become mates with, or the developers, they give you a call, you'll drop everything to go on hang one door for them, yeah. which it's not worth you even charging them for, but you'll do it for them because based off a relationship. It's a good thing to do. It's yeah. the right thing to do. Yeah, they've you looked know. after you, you look after them. Mm. So yeah. So so you're going to be the guy who's the 
construction manager then with all your own developments? You'll be running the projects, or yes, do you co- see correct. do you see it bigger than that? As in, you will have construction managers working for you. you look, crawl before you walk. But yeah. I'd like I I'd, I'd like to see that vision that I'm capable of doing that. But as in everything I do, one step at a time. And yeah, which is the way to go, right? Yeah, um, well, it is. You you know, everyone's for having big dreams and that, but let's be realistic. You've got to. I believe everything's trial and error. Yeah, in life. You know, I've learned. You've got to learn. Well, in my life, every, every, I've learned everything from mistakes. Yeah. So I'll, I'll keep rolling that way. Mm. I think. Roll with the punches. So the strategy for you now, you're, you're, you're fattening up your own portfolio mm-hmm. with plenty of equity that yep. you can use to start developing correct. in a real simple way. So yeah, correct. have you started or when do you start? I haven't started anything yet. Okay. But I've potentially got to buy more property okay. before this. But as, as the Canberra market is at the moment, everything's highly priced. Mm. Um, and it's really hard to get something at a deal. So it's another... It's another avenue I've got to look at now. I've got to look at buying rundown properties and now spending money, my time, which is which so is you just can do move. like cosmetic or maybe some yeah, structural renos. Yeah, and stuff. I might yeah. throw an extra bedroom on here and there on a few yeah. bits and pieces. Okay, you know things like that because I spent all, all all the properties I've got now, they're all townhouses and units. Okay, which have been generated from working for these guys. Okay, over the years. So you've been the stuff that you've been building, you've been buying, purchasing. Yes. Okay, you've been getting sort of preferential pricing on it. Uh, yeah, like the things. Yeah, so. there's a yeah. few things I probably shouldn't say on yeah, air, yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's okay. yeah. but but yeah, um, we um, that's generally what I do. We come we come to an agreement, and that's cool. There's I pur- nothing wrong with that. I, pur- that, that I, pur- I purchase it at at the right price. Yeah, yeah. well, I'm sure you put your sweat equity in there, right? Yeah, exactly. Swap and swap and time for yeah. it, so you're still paying. Yeah, that's exactly you right. Know. That's exactly right. And therefore, that's going to dictate that you're only going to buy in a Canberra market because you need to be on the ground to do the work yourself. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, and, and it's I don't I don't have a hand in any of these properties. I don't property manage them i don't organize the finance i don't yeah you know my, my hands are all i all i see is the red and the green yeah the debt and the, and the equity that's all i see in my bank account mm. as opposed i there's a couple i've never even gone and looked at before okay. in my life which yeah. is probably a big no-no in property investment yeah but you know you, 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 you gotta you find just, your own balance and your own risk yeah. appetite up. so um you want to start therefore identifying properties in the Canberra market that you can add value to. Correct. But you want to buy them under market value. Yeah, so, 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 of course. It's, it's, it's quite similar to the strategy I have, right? Yeah, under market yeah. value properties. Yep. If you can potentially add value to it through through some sort of reno, yeah, whether yeah. it's cosmetic or, or you're talking a little bit more structural. Yeah, you know, well, it's, it's um, you know, you look at it, it's a tradesman. I, I can I can do things for, you know, half the cost, Yeah. you know, as the average person, you know, to put a, put a one-bedroom extension on a house might only cost me 20 grand, might cost, cost the average boat 60. Yeah. You know, so and, and and that is that is the um the benefits actually having having a construction background, right? It's, yeah. it's a completely different yeah. world. And you know, I, I get involved in. I haven't done a reno for a little while because most of the stuff I've been buying up is being in Brisbane. Anything yeah. Sydney based, I'd go out there and I'll, you know, I can do pretty much anything that doesn't. Yeah, you know, I can tile, I can paint. You know, yeah. I can uh, you know pretty base stuff. I wouldn't fit in kitchens or anything like real specialised trades yeah. or, or plumbing or, yep. you know, any sort of construction of walls or plastering and stuff like that. But, yep. you know, as a as someone who's, who's handy, mm. you know, I can do certain bits of it and yep. that saves a lot of money, but but you're at a different s- scale yeah, yeah, of that yeah. where you can do everything, right? Yeah, yeah exactly you know, right. You can exactly, do everything. Exactly right. How many hours you work a week now, you reckon? Um, including office time? Yeah. I'd be... I'd be 80 hours. 80 hours. Yeah. Okay. Which it's quite draining because yeah. I've got a young family, mm. married with three children. Um, wow. So it's a, it's a tough life now, mm. but you just got, just got to keep a, keep an eye on the bigger picture at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah. That's cool. And, and, and your, your partner, your wife, mm-hmm. all on side, she, she gets the strategy. She, she has, she has yeah. her moments. Yeah. She doesn't like looking at the bank accounts. <laughs> so that's cool. But there's an upside, right? Yeah, you there know? is. Yeah, there yeah. is. Um, look, you know, I, I don't, I don't see me doing anything else. Mm. So I've got to. I believe I've got to stay on this path and stick with my targets and goals yeah. in life, and just who, see where they're helping take. you. Who's helping you crystallise what they are? Um, well, I've got same as same as most people in my situation. We've mm. got a network. Okay. But my main driver and my mentor is my accountant. Okay. Um, you know, he's structured everything in my business to where it is today. That's good. Um, I've got Cam- Cambrook, Cam based account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but we we um. Yeah, we've only owned one property personally. The mm. rest are all in family trusts and things okay. like that. So, so you're building for the future, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Look, at, at, at any for, for any man to, to not look at the future and think, oh, you know, I've got to hold on to this property and, mm. you know, potentially use this when I retire because, you know, is superannuation really going to be there on the back end of it for, it, for us all? Yeah. And I don't know. I've just I've just been lucky enough to be in the situation I have to, to do what I do. I think 
there's also a lot of longevity. And longevity in property investment is key, right? Like mm. at the moment, you're in your 30s, yep. still fit. Yep. You know, it's it's quite a physical job doing what you're doing. You can't yeah. do it forever. You know, when you see these 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 like mm. carpenters and traders sort of 70 years old, still in the yeah. tools, and you just go, you know, to, like that, that's that's a pretty hard going, yeah, right? 40 years doing that, 50 to, years doing that. It's one vision I have that I will not be doing it. You don't, next, want, to, you don't want to be that guy, Next right? five years, no way. But you've got longevity in that. You can transition through. There's mm. so many different components of it. If you just sit there and rock up in your car and just check in, see what's going on. Yeah. You know that that's that's but, cool as well. Yeah, a lot, of, and that's right. And a lot of the time, that's all it takes for mm. a day's work. Um, but like most business owners, there's a little bit of controlish. Yeah, going on there. You've got to get out there and show them how it's done from time to time. Do you have guys working directly for you? Do you do you have subcontractors? I, I do use contractors. Yep. Um, okay. Usually, when the workload's getting quite large, mm. and I've still got to hit my targets. You know my schedules. Yeah, um, that's usually when I'll bring those guys in to give me a hand. Mm. But it's the same. It's the same, I guess, as any professional. We've all got our people we can lean on and help us in. You know, we're all mates in yeah. the same industry. Yeah. You know, we're not out there. We're all there to earn money. We're not out there to burn each do, other. Do, do the mates, the guys that you work with, get where you're going with this? Do you like talk about it with no, them? Or they, no, 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 I'm quite secretive. <laughs> I wouldn't say secretive. I just, I'm just not the type of person to go around and. Yeah. But if about. someone asks, you'd be happy to yeah, talk about I'm it. Yeah, I'm happy to tell yeah. people what I got and how, yeah. how I've achieved it and things like that. A lot of people don't really get it who invest in property, but. It's, it's your tradies, you know, and, and, you know, your carpenters, your plumbers, your sparkies, you know, who, who are typically the guys killing it and mm. girls killing it in, yeah. in property investment because yeah. you have so many, so many advantages over yeah. everyone else, right? You know, yeah. you know, you've got potentially the cash flow going through your business, which is cool, yeah. um, but it's the knowledge. If you want to get into this development game or even just just doing, you know, renos on places, you know, the speed yeah. at which we you can do it and the cost effectiveness yeah. you can do it in gives you so many different advantages. Whereas yeah. everyone else is stuck with finding traders to do the work. And traders, if they're doing work for you, they want to make a buck out of you, right? Yeah, yeah exactly you know? right. You yeah. know, and w- when tradies, when we all jump in and help each other, it's generally, you know, barter, swap, yeah. swap trades here and there, you works. know. Yeah. You know, and, and look, it works. It works for the fact that none of us have to release Money, money out of hand to mm. help each other. You're out. Just swapping time. Yeah, that's that's what we're doing. So yeah. essentially, it is costing you, but you know, we're not having to fork the capital out yeah. on the spot. You know, which that's for good. a lot of people's, you know, pretty big deal. You know, if I go to someone, oh, you owe me twenty grand. Yeah. You know, the twenty grand's hard to find, but I'll give you twenty grand's worth of my time. Yeah, yeah exactly right. You know? Exactly um, right. You know, my take. You know, half a dozen weekends, but they, you know, everyone's generally comes to the party and makes the it system work. works. It's probably one of the only real industries left where. That system yeah, works yeah. right. I, I think it's really refreshing. I like yeah. it. I wish the rest. Yeah, of the just world a verbal, that way. just a verbal agreement. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. problem is I can't swap my time for anything. No one wants me to just sit there and talk, right? You know, <laughs> you I'm not really that many value. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really cool story. So um, you're saying that you need to fat up your portfolio yep. before you can really go down this sort of next stage. Correct. How, how so? Nine properties now, sort of four point something. Was it four point something? Four point four point six. Four, four point six. How big do you think that needs to be oh, before you can start comfortably extracting? Equity. And and I guess the question is, because you you're looking for these properties that you can add value to, which mm-hmm. means that you're you're you, you've got a geographic barrier, right? Of yep. probably twenty kilometres from Canberra. Pretty much. Canberra, where, where, yep. where, where, where in Canberra do you live? I live in a new suburb called Moncrief. I so, know but, what that is. Yeah, yeah. So north 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 Canberra, Gungarland. Okay. So where 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 majority of the construction's happening? So if you're coming into town from Sydney, you pretty much turn right. Okay. Onto that first road, yeah, yeah, yeah. Head, okay. to, head down there. All right. right, that's where all the new suburbs get yeah. built. Okay, cool. So, um, so you sort of restricted maybe 15, 20 kilometres to yep. travel any time yep. uh, to get the job done. Yeah. So, what are you looking for, like nineteen eighties type stuff that yeah, needs a refresh? Look, it's essentially, I I want to target the ex gubbies. Okay. You know, two, three beddy, one bath. Yeah. Pretty run down. Yeah. You know where. You know, you could probably, you generally, you're more, most likely to get that at a good price. Where yeah. I've only got to strip a strip bit of carpet and repaint walls. And yeah, that's pretty. It's pretty easy stuff. Uh, renoing those because the bare bones of the product is pretty good. Mm. You know, they're, yeah, they're right. built. Reasonably yeah, they're, well. yeah, the seventies homes are good. Yeah. You know, so a lot of that's still hardwood construction. Mm. You know, um, the foundations are still fine, and there's still, the, I guess, it comes down to my target market yeah. as well of who I'm trying to achieve. You know, to rent these properties. So what would you what would you buy next sort of you took an next sort of housing commission type properties yeah, right yeah, what, what would yep. you be picking them up in in Ken- oh, but they're really close to the center of town as well yeah, right yeah yeah um, they're not they're not they're not like two hundred three hundred thousand dollars you're yeah. still looking over half a million bucks mm. for anything of reasonable yeah. use that you're not really going to tear to the ground you know because because a lot of in in the ACT it's the land that's got the value yeah not not the house the mm. house is worthless essentially yeah. at the end of the day you know you're watching people pay. You know, 12, 14, 1500 bucks a square meter. Yeah. You know, 
And so, say you're picking one. What, what sort of are you talking like Deacon Way or where, where were yeah, they? Yeah, not, not not so not so. I'm looking more West Belconnen. Okay, uh, Deacon's a little bit too close. Yeah, to the you know the go- the, the, the government. Yeah, you know, and, and those those you know those areas are, are you're paying price. Yeah. You're paying big bucks. Bell Connors. Well, how long's take you getting the camera from there? It's only nice. uh, to the city. Fifteen. So Fifteen minutes. Yeah, right? twenty minutes. That's pretty bad cool. traffic. Yeah. So any anywhere in Canberra, you can drive from one end of Canberra to the other in forty minutes. Okay. That's no, no, no sweat. So if you're picking up one of these properties for circa 500, yep. Uh, what do you got to drop on them there thereabouts to actually get them to a point? To I'd, I'd probably look to do it. I'd, I'd only have to drop 30, 40. Okay, out of my own pocket. Yeah. So new kitchen, bathroom, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just all cosmetic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's maybe a bit of landscaping. Maybe, maybe paint outside. Yeah. If the driveways bugger, yeah. replace the driveway. Just be, just things like that. Okay. It's, it's all a visual at the end of the day for the mm. for the clients that want to move in. Yeah. For the renters. So that's good. And so, say you're buying for five hundred by spending that money. What 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 can you lift them to? You know that and that's the, that's the gold, right? What what can you, you turn these products into? Well, in Canberra, it depends on the suburb. But yeah. I'd I'd be looking at trying to grow an extra one twenty to one fifty on top of what okay. I put in. So triple your money, pretty much. Yeah. You're throwing forty, you want one hundred and twenty yep. back, which yep. is okay. Yep. And that's so that's building the equity. Yep. Building the equity. Keep building doing. It. Keep doing. Keep doing. To a point in time when, and I guess in the background you'll be trying to identify potential development sites. Yeah. 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 Which is already happening. Okay. Um. But as Canberra is at the moment, the market's pretty hot mm. for developers and builders. Yeah. Um. And they're paying a premium for, you know, the worst block of land in town. Yeah. So it's um, it's a it's a, it's a hard market to compete with. But mm. you know you got to have you got to have driving. Some form of vision, don't you? <laughs> well, this is it. And, and the thing is that if you're doing this, if you're doing these sort of uh, cosmetic renos, mm. you don't need that. People make the biggest mistake developing by buying the wrong property, right? Yeah. Because they're either rushing it, and, and you don't yeah. want to. You don't want to be forced to rush. You don't need to rush, no. right? The more you do this other stuff, it's going to fatten up your your equity position mm-hmm. even more, so you can potentially acquire a different sort of block or, or a block which yeah. is a little bit more prestige or slightly yeah. bigger. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Point three, you can put four on. Yeah. How, how big sort of – what sort of blocks are you looking for? Do you want to go sort of three, four townhouses or you want to go bigger than that? Yeah, no, that would be the start. Yeah. You know, nothing bigger than six. Okay. Um, same thing, you know, you still got to still got to learn the ropes regardless you've been watching it happen for years yeah. upon years. You know, you've still got to – Still got to earn your stripes, I believe. Mate, when it's your own money in there, you'll be thinking of things slightly different. I'll be picking know? every nail up off yeah. the ground and straightening it up to reuse it. <laughs> yeah. So, Blokes, you see guys on site doing that? Uh, not, anymore. not anymore. You used to. Nails are cheap. Yeah. Nails are cheap. I don't cheap. think you guys carry hammers anymore. It's all like compressor nail guns. I couldn't tell you the last though. time I actually swung my hammer. Yeah. I used it to flog a bit of timber off, off, off the ground. That's, That's a bit it. <laughs> so. oh, it's good, Nathan, mate. Good story. Um, You're doing something different, you know, but I, yeah. I reckon a lot of people will be listening to this and, and you don't need to be a carpenter or a tradie to, to have this particular strategy, but yep. you know, you've got so many advantages over people that don't. Yeah, yeah. well, well, I think um, my, my story, I, I just I just believe it, ne- and it was never a vision originally mm. like this. Um, it's just something that's morphed in over time. Yeah. So it wasn't like... It's organic, right? Yeah, just, yeah, just, of course. The and more you, just, you learn, the more you think about things and, and potentially... Yeah, and, and, the, and the, more, the more you bounce around with your, with your networks and mm. things like that, you know, you, you get ideas and visions and you try things out, may not work, and you just go back to the path and... So it's um I don't I don't know for for the average person I believe that's where I've come from mm. you know never had a target of having x amount of money or x amount of debt yeah. and x amount of property um it's just something that slowly grows like you said organic and morphs yeah. morphs into it sounds, morphs into it what it is. It's like you want to do this because you can do it rather than yeah. chasing some big yeah big paycheck at point in time. But I think that will be a product of doing this. Yeah yeah hundred percent. But it's not really the driver, uh, which is good. Yeah. You know? So it's um. Do you get satisfaction when you finish job and just go? Oh, that, that, yeah, you yeah. do. You yeah. do. I never used to. Mm. Um, now that you get a bit older and you can stand back and reflect a little bit. Yeah. It's just always next site, next site. Yeah, next yeah it job. is, and like it's there's it's a high pressure game. Mm. You know, if it, it's not for everyone. Yeah. You know, you either sink or you swim. Mm. Cash flow can be hot. One builder might not pay you. Yeah. You know, that could be the end of it all. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, a lot of traders come undone with that sort of stuff. Yeah, you so know. you got to pick your poison as mm. well. Yeah. You know, so. Good. Yeah, it's good. Well, let's get you back in a year's time, see how you're getting yeah, on. Yeah, sounds good. So tell me, so, and we'll check back in when we do this in a year's time. Yep. You know, where are you going to be in a year? I believe I'll still be living in the same property I'm in. Yep. I want to have another three properties. Okay. And potentially another five employees. There we go. That's it. That's, 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 a a, that's the target. But right. we'll see. Shoot, well, it's shoot, set, shoot, it's set now, high. mate. It's there. Shooting it's, high. It's not going to go away now, mate. No, that's once right. we put this up, it's, uh, you're stuck with it. But, uh, no, Nathan, really enjoy the chat, mate. Um, yeah, keep it yep. up. Keep going on at it. And, uh, you know, good. embrace the passion which yeah, you got. Yeah, great. Thank nice you very one. much. Good Thanks one. for having me. Remember to check out Smart Property Investment. 
www.ghostbusters.com.au where we sort of cover a lot of this sort of stuff and um, are sharing people's stories. Nathan uh, is, is down his particular path and he's using uh, his capabilities that he's learned over many years being in the building game to amplify his ability to be a better property investor. So use what you got and, and look how you can capitalise it. And Nathan's uh, just a story like that. If you're not yet subscribing to Smart Property Investments, so you're the first to know what's going on in uh, property markets right across Australia, smartpropertyinvestment.com.au forward slash subscribe. Uh, you can also find us on social media as well, Smart Property HQ. Just search us and you can keep connected. If you like what we're doing, uh, if you've got any questions for, for about this podcast around Nathan, um, email the team here, uh, editor at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. And please keep those uh, reviews coming on iTunes. We we do appreciate them. It's nice to know what we're doing here is, uh, is resonating with um, uh, a very rapidly a growing community of property investors right across Australia. We'll be back again next time. Until then, bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned.